John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures. Series testing, successful hunting. I've got a really cool broadhead to test here, and I've gotten so many requests to test this head. Finally got my hands on them. They just started sending them out, and they're already sold out, but they're getting in new batches in May. And that is the Tough Head Evolution Series. So they have a two blade and a three blade. I'm also gonna be testing the three blade in another video, but this is a two blade single bevel head. Now, if you're not familiar with Tough Head, they've been around for quite a while, and they have a really good follow especially in trad archery, but they were purchased, the whole company was bought about three years ago, I think it was like 2019 or something like that, by a guy named Jason. I can't pronounce his last name, but for short, it's just Wojo, I think. Um, he's a great guy. I've talked to him quite a bit. It's like a boutique company, you know, a small, you know, mom and pop shop, probably just pop shop, okay? Just him, and he's got another full-time job in addition to the broadhead business, but man, it's growing. And this Evolution series they've come out with is their crossover in into the compound bow market. So this is their two blade single bevel, some really unique things about it. Let's zoom on in here, check out the design features and specifications, and then put it to the test and see how it performs. Here's a good close up look at the head. It's machined out of a single chunk of S7 tool steel, which is a fantastic steel to use in a broadhead application because of its hardness and its resistance to impact. And they say with their proprietary hardening process, they have found a really good balance between hardness, resistance to impact, and ability to be resharpened. It's also coated with ceramic coating over the, the surface just to uh, provide extra corrosion resistance as well as a slick feel to aid in penetration. Now this is the 200 grain model. There's also a 300 grain model that has slightly different specifications. The blades on this one are 0.070 inches thick, nice thick blades. It's 1.36 inches long, and the cutting diameter is 1 and 3 16 inches. That's a 16th of an inch wider than most two blades, uh, single bevel heads that are like 1 and 1 8 inches. It's got this flared back design to make it easier to pull out, as well as to decrease the surface area to aid in the flight, but, uh, but the, it's not sharpened in the back. It's flared, but not sharpened there. Now, um, as I said, it's single bevel, and you can see it there, the single bevel but the, the angle on this is 20 degrees. So it's got a 20 degree bevel. I think that's the slightest angle of any single bevel that I've ever seen. And they say the, the benefits of that are one, to aid in penetration because there's a mechanical advantage to that, allowing it to penetrate more readily. And also they don't want the head to over rotate, which is an interesting concept to me. I typically think of the benefit of a single bevel is its incredible rotation, but they don't want it to over rotate because they think sometimes that may impede in penetration through bone and so forth. And also the 20 degree bevel uh, makes it a bit easier to resharpen. If you just lay a stone across it on the, on the edge right there, it's pretty easy to find and pretty wide to be able to stroke it. Though if you're laying it flat on a stone, like laying it down like that, you got to be careful because it can uh, the stone can rub up against the ferrule while you're doing that if you're not careful. Now this um, has this tanto tip that's really cool. I like the tanto tip there, but it's also got just a single bevel that goes the entire way. So the Tanto tip doesn't have to be sharpened in any extra way. There's only two sharpenable areas, and yet it has this stout Tanto tip to uh, help prevent rollover as well. It's also got this extra wide ferrule that they say is kind of like an S-cut plus. It gives a, a bit of a wider wound channel, makes more of a hole as well as a slit, and it provides lateral strength, lateral durability. It goes almost all the way to the tip right there to provide extra strength. Now it's right bevel only, and they say it's hunt ready. So it's been hand finished, tested for its spin, and it does spin very well. I can testify to that. And it's, uh, it's supposedly gonna be really hunt ready in terms of sharpness as well. Comes with a lifetime warranty. And uh, you know, they're already sold out of the initial batch, but they have a whole new batch coming in May. So uh, they, they looks like they're selling pretty well. I'm really eager to see how well this head performs. 
I want to explain a bit about my testing protocol for 2021 at this point. Okay, I do these tests to try to make them um, as relevant to hunting situations as possible, but I want to provide you with data points. You can determine whether those data points are important to you or not, but I'm going to give you some data points to gauge or judge a broadhead's effectiveness based on, okay? And that way you can make the best broadhead selection for you and your hunting setup and your hunting situation. So I do a flight test where I shoot two broadheads and a field point at 40 yards and just see relatively how well do they group together and I score them accordingly. I do a penetration test, actually two penetration tests. One penetration test, I shoot them through a half inch layer of MDF surrounded by two one third inch layers of rubber foam mat and backed up by clear ballistics FBI grade gel. I do penetration test two, a second test where I shoot it into layered cardboard and just see straight up how many layers of cardboard the broadhead penetrates through. I do a sharpness test where I'm using this really cool uh, new scale that I have, the edge on up sharpness tester. And what it does is it uses this small little clip that's made out of aluminum with a wire, a copolymer wire that's engineered to be super consistent and, and also engineered to break in a, in a certain way rather than to stretch just to test edge sharpness. And so I put it on the, on the scale that they make and I measure the amount of grams of force it takes to cut through that copolymer wire. And there's a scale that comes with the, uh, the tester that kind of shows you some different things like a butter knife and how many grams of pressure it takes to cut through this, this wire, uh, a cutlery knife, uh, a razor blade, things like that, so we can gauge it by. Then I came up with a scoring system based on broadheads and kind of how they, uh, how they compare to each other, a one to 10 scoring system to gauge that sharpness. Then I also do an edge retention test where after penetration test one, I also do a sharpness test and I see how much of the sharpness has been lost. And I have a scale that I use to grade that on so they get a score of one to 10 on, in that regard as well. Then I do a durability test where I shoot fixed blade heads through 22 gauge steel plate up to five times. And mechanicals, I shoot through a half inch layer of MDF because they're not quite as durable typically. And I see, I shoot them five times through that, that layer of MDF just to see how well they hold up through that. And then the final test that I do is I shoot them into a cinder block because I just want to see the, the zero penetration test, like test the overall structural integrity and durability of the head. And it's just kind of fun to do that anyway. And then I I also have a score that I use for ease of resharpening and I put the price on the score list as well. And then I take all of those scores and based on how I think the broadhead performed, I give it a Lusk grade, a score of one to 10 golden arrows based on how effective that broadhead is at accomplishing what it sets out to accomplish. And for all of these tests, I'm using uh, my Bowtech SR6 27 inch draw, it's at 72 pounds. I lower it to 65 pounds for the penetration test through cardboard just because I don't want to shoot it all the way through and go into my wall. Okay, then for arrows, I'm using, uh, for most of the tests, the Bishop Archery uh, FOC King Arrow. It's super straight, flies extremely well. It's also durable. But then uh, for the harder impact test, I'm using the Bishop Archery Fad Eliminator, the Firearms Dispatch Eliminator. It's footed, and so it's extra durable. And then for some destruction tests that I'm gonna do down the road, I use the Bishop Archery Goat, the greatest of all time. This is the straightest, stiffest, most durable arrow that's ever been made, apparently. I mean, this thing is a formidable weapon. And so I'm gonna be using this in some of my tests down the road. So that explains a bit of the testing that I do. I hope it's helpful. Here you can see the grouping. The field point is on the left, and then the two broadheads are there in the center, just a tad high. Two twenty-five.
It penetrated eight inches. Two twenty five. It penetrated through sixty one layers. It rotated forty degrees. Here are the holes in this steel plate, and you can see the classic S-cut of a decent single bevel head, as well as you can see the, the ferrule diameter makes a nice hole in the center of that S-cut. So it's a bit more than just a slice. Here's the head after going through the steel plate five times. Spins perfectly well. You can notice a bit of edge chatter. It's one of the downsides of uh, such a gradual bevel angle like that. Now, being made out of S7 tool steel allows that to hold its edge quite well for that 20 degree blade angle. But still, you see just a little bit of edge chatter there on each of the, uh, the edges there. Here's the tough head single bevel after going through the cinder block. And it held up relatively well, still spins well. However, you can see that it did experience a bit of rollover there at the tip. The main part of the broad head held up fine, but that last, oh, quarter of an inch or so rolled over. I wondered if maybe this was just a, an anomaly because I had shot it through the steel plate already and maybe it hit at a funny angle in the center block. So I went ahead and tested it again with another head since I had another one and it uh, produced the exact same result. So what'd you think of the Tough Head Elite Series 2 blade? Man, it has some really good strengths. You can see the sharpness as well as the edge retention, the sharpness test after penetration test one. It did very well. It flew well, penetrated well, rotated fairly well. Although you gotta remember this is a 200 grain head and most of the heads in my scoring are 125 grains. So that's gonna help a bit in the penetration and also in the rotation because it's gonna penetrate a bit more deeply in that regard. Um, I'd say the weakness of it from my testing was the durability when it came to going through the steel plate and then into the cinder block. Now, I know we don't hunt steel plate and cinder block, but in terms of data points, you could see the 20 degree bevel has its weakness in that area that even with the S7 tool steel, it's just not gonna be as durable as a, a steeper bevel would be. However, there are still some great strengths to it as well. So check out the score sheet and see how it performed in the areas that matter to you the most. <laughs> <laughs>